Super Mario 64 is easily one of my favorite Mario games of all time. I love everything about it except for this one stage. Many people would say that the chain chops or like the piano started them as a kid, but personally the eel from Super Mario 64 is what scared me. Hell, even to this day, well, well sometimes. <laughs> There are certain missions where you have to like really get close to this eel for him to like move away so you can get where you need to go. And when he moves away, he just gets closer to the screen. I just hate the way he looks already, so him getting even closer to my screen causes me to just move back by instinct. I randomly ran into this commercial somewhere back in the early YouTube days. I don't know if I already stated this already, but I'm a huge Mario fan. So of course that also includes that I'm a big fan of Nintendo. With that being said, when I first like saw this randomly in my recommendations, I watched it and like froze in fear. All of the characters were quite creepy, but Bowser was the one that terrified me the most. I was also never afraid of the castle theme in the original Super Mario Bros. game, but the way they handle it in this commercial changed that for me. I thought it was going to be some parody innocent commercial, but I guess the 80s worked a bit differently. We are Nintendo Ultimate TV Game System. We challenge all players. You cannot beat us. Aim your Zappa gun. You cannot beat us. Even with your robot partner. You cannot beat us. So one million. You cannot beat us. Discover new worlds. I'll admit it, I was the batch of the bunch that was scared of this iconic music video. The song was great and seeing dancing zombies was awesome, but there was this one particular scene in the music video that I did not quite like, and that was that werewolf scene. This scene terrified me as a kid and because of that I grew a huge dislike for both the music video and Michael Jackson himself for quite some time. Once I got into my teens and my kiddie fear started to go away, I gave this music video another try and to my surprise, re-watching it years later, I noticed that it wasn't as scary as I pictured it to be. Sonic that EXE was one of my first creepypasta stories I have ever heard of. Yeah. I even heard about this story um, before Slenderman, Ben Drown, and like even Dead Bart. As much as I hate to say it, yeah, I was a bit scared of Sonic Dead EXE. But can you really blame me though? Just look at this image. Tell me that this did not frighten you when you were younger. The story was in and like so was the game, but the music is what caught my attention. Something I didn't know when I was younger was that Sonic the EXE took some music from the Sonic CD American soundtrack, and when I looked more into Sonic CD for the first time, it brought me even more chills. I mean, have you heard of that Game Over music? Oh, and these Easter eggs too. I'm out of here! I first found out about this story through a YouTube video where this guy listed a bunch of like lost episode creepypastas that he thought that were pretty decent. When I first watched it for the first time, I didn't think much of it as I thought it was humorous due to how bad the animation was and like the robotic voice acting. But after he got done talking about staring to the fireplace together or something like that, there was a very weird pause and that's where things got lit on suddenly. He really goes into detail of how it'll just be the two of us, aka you the viewer and him, with no parents or no police. Just saying that to myself just makes me uncomfortable. But no matter what we do it will just be the two of us, alone in this room. Just me and you, no parents, no police, no one can hear you. Embrace me. I need love. Brother need love.
Anything black and white and old always gave me bad vibes, and that's exactly what this video gave me. After watching a few minutes of Mickey Mouse walking around a town, looking lost, you hear a woman in the background that sounds like she's being completely tortured. Mickey smirking when the screaming happens makes it even more unsettling. But that's not all though. Compared to the other creepypasta I list here, the story on this particular creepypasta is what frightened me the most. It is said that after one of the employees viewed the video, he committed suicide by shooting himself in the head. Hearing that story and watching the video kept me up at night as I kept picturing the screaming in my head and the thought of suicide as I never heard of it around that time. I'll be honest here, I never watched a full video of this, and probably never will. Hearing the audio to this video just scared the shit out of me, and made me uncomfortable to continue watching. For what I know anyways, the beginning of the video sounds like some babies chuckling and laughing with like high pitched voices, and towards the middle of it, they sound like they're singing in some demonic harmony, I'm not so, I'm not so sure. There is also some scenery that the video shows, but I didn't really give any attention to it as I thought it wasn't as scary as the audio. All I remember seeing was Pennywise looking back and forth, a few of the flowers, and like two cartoon drawings of babies. I, I, I don't know. All I'm trying to say is that this video is still creepy to me. <laughs> If we're being honest here, if we're looking at the forest fires from a visual standpoint, they look really cool to a degree, however witnessing this in real life has to be terrifying. I remember seeing a video titled Driving Through Hell on the channel named Top15, somewhere around YouTube. Searching up these types of videos for me anyways were very haunting and chilling to watch. I don't know why I was so interested in watching these videos back then, but anyways, take a look at these clips. Usually when your teacher puts on a film, it's an easy day for the whole class. You write down a few notes, turn in the assignment, easy A. But for this film, I couldn't do either. I couldn't sleep or write notes because this film really messed me up back in high school. 
You would think a film titled The Lottery would be about an ordinary film about someone winning the lottery and getting something rewarding, right? Nope, not in this film. It's the exact opposite. The goal in this film is to not win the lottery because if you do, you die. Like, you get stoned to death. I really couldn't get this film out of my mind for a few days, nor did I ever want to watch this film ever again. The thought of being stoned to death or stoning a loved one was just too much for me. Easily the most disturbing film I've ever watched. Hey, Davy. It isn't fair! What I remember at least, this was like the very last thing I was afraid of growing up. I believe I was a senior when an image of this creepy thing started surfing around the web. The ARP sculpture was named Motherbird, but online users titled it Momo. This thing just freaked me out when I first found out about it. Just look at it. The eyes and the mouth is already bothering me just thinking about it. To make matters worse, there was even a challenge named after her that took inspiration from another challenge called the Blue Well Game that basically leads kids into committing suicide. Totally messed up. This ghoul is freaking everyone out. She's called Momo. She's got bug eyes, long stringy hair, a monstrous grimace, and spooky chicken legs. Imagine this freaky character suddenly popping up in cartoons on YouTube channels for kids. Momo, Momo, Momo's gonna kill you. 